Hello, Marty Brayton here. This is going to be a little bit different. This is a tangent from my normal review videos of part one through part 46 or whatever that I've done so far. I just felt um, at this particular stage there's been a few things that have uh, happened and occurred that have just brought me to a point where I wanted to share, take the little time here as a tangent to share a few thoughts about what has been happening in my head and and uh, what I've observed out there amongst uh, all of you out there in the world of the internet. Anyhow, one of the things I wanted to mention is David Alexander's uh, channel. Uh, he's that man that was an evangelical for the entirety of his life, pretty much 47 years, that has since joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And his video has been very unique. One thing he's done, he's given a challenge to his viewers to do a personal testimony to help build a wall of refuge in a sense that we can all stand strong in and, and invite all those who have and are searching for the, the truth to, to come and check it out. Anyhow, as I've reflected on that, it's made me th stop and think. I mean, I've listened to every single one of the testimonies from the two minute ones to the hour and 12 minute ones or whatever. I've even done a testimony on his channel. It was uh, kind of my <laughs> way of doing things and typed it up so I could get my focus and share it. Otherwise, I like now I'm rambling and that, but it's from my heart, so we'll see where it takes me. But it made me think of the great gathering that we're living in today. I know that the um, life in which we live as we know it right now here on this earth, it uh, is going to continue to change over the months and years to come. The things are going to get, like I said in one of my videos, uh, um, the polarization is going to just stretch it to the max and that middle ground is going to go away. But all during that time, God is hastening his work and the hastening is happening right now as he gathers into the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, people from all over the world. And his greatest tool for doing that is the Book of Mormon. The Bible is wonderful, don't misunderstand. But the Book of Mormon, that second witness, is one of three total witnesses that's going to ultimately be the case. Uh, the, the lost tribes, ten tribes, that's going to be the third one. So, you know, anyhow, they're going to come together in one whole of testimony. Three testimonies that... Uh, Two out of three witnesses, two and to three witnesses is going to testify, and that's the third one that's coming. But until then, uh, there's a gathering taking place, and the gospel's to the uh, Gentiles right now. And one day in the future, that's going to be pulled back because Gentiles are going to reject it, and that's when it's going to then be taken. The first shall be last, and the last will be first. It's going to be taken to the Jews to uh, learn of the restored gospel and the return of the twelve tribes, uh, ten tribes, and that kind of thing. But the Book of Mormon is, I can use this as a little illustration, this is a little Swiffer, kind of, and you go to dust and do that kind of thing, and you just like, collects the dust and just jumps right to it. Well, those that are pure in heart, that have that sense of searching and longing that each one of these testimonies that I've been listening to of converts to the church, not born and raised as a, a child born under the covenant like I am from the from the time I was a thought in my dad's mind and we came into the world and I was taught the gospel and I've lived 69 years almost in the uh, faith of being on the covenant it's so different I mean we each get our own conversion we'll talk about that in, in my review of some of the later chapters of my book but we all have to come to a conversion but these sweet people who have had unique backgrounds and they give their backstory uh, there's been several of late that uh, were on Richard's uh, I mean, David's, Alexander's uh, channel that have just been so delightful from being in the world where they are, how they were raised in, in Christian home or not so Christian home, or they had divorce in their home early on and their families were broke apart, but they went on this journey and being part of an organization they loved and they learned, but they couldn't, they had that feeling in their mind and heart that they still there's something more there's got to be something more there's some unanswered big questions whatever to talk about their journey what's been so exciting to me is to listen to them and i can't help as i sit and watch and take a note here and there that scriptures just flood my mind the words of christ just floods my mind see and everything that they said and what has taken place there's tons of scriptures from all four of the uh, quad that we believe in the bible the book of mormon the dog comes pearl of great price the words of the living prophets i guess there's five we could talk about living prophets their stories their comments their teachings that christ said what would happen his promises are being fulfilled their stories are a living play right on the screen of these laptops or on their computers they just tell their story and you go 
man, there's that verse, there's that verse, there's that promise, there's that. That happens exactly like I was saying earlier in the uh, video about the spiritual method as opposed to the scientific method. Both methods bring truth about, but how it's done, those steps of how, if you hear their stories, every one of them learned the gospel. They had to get rid of that accusatory fog or break through their life's experiences that conditioned them not to listen to the cults or whatever. Somehow the Holy Ghost penetrated that and tenderized their their feelings and their hearts and they allowed and recognized the Holy Ghost. They felt it was Christ or God speaking to them and that uh, still small voice, that uh, light of Christ burning within the pilot light, lighting up and coming into driving them to search and to overcome those fears and those uh, uh, traditions of mind that you don't know, you know, they're of the devil. To hear them tell their story and how that broke down and they're just turning their heart and simplicity to God as a child and trusting him and then he pours out the answers and gives them the answers they're looking for. Not without an effort though. And you talk about the different grounds that those seeds land on. I mean the scriptures just come to life when you hear these conversion stories. And so I just had to mention that. It's just been so delightful that uh, they learn the gospel. Then they pray for love. They Many a times they're just wanting to feel that love of Christ and the Savior and our Heavenly Father as well. That love for his children comes and that is a gift. And so I wanted to share a little story as a Latter-day Saint my whole life. You may seem this is a little different, but part of my conversion story was Many, several years ago, I was a young man, a family of eight, um, one at Pat, but we had seven living children, and um, I had been studying the gospel for six months heavy on a particular topic. I had come across a verse that said um, that gifts of the Spirit, one of which is love, the love of Christ, to pray for the gift, to desire that gift, and so I wanted that. I mean, I love people, don't misunderstand, but I knew there was something special that he would bring that up in the scriptures about loving, um, receiving that gift of love, the love of Christ, that Christ-like love that's beyond ourselves. And so I've been studying, reading, questioning, and praying, and praying, and praying for more than six months. Anyhow, I had an afternoon, it was in the kind of the summertime, I had an afternoon, I had finished work around 3.30, so I was heading home, I was really close to home, I drove across, the, I drove on the street to go to my home in front of a junior high that's in our neighborhood, and it was 3.30, the class was out, <laughs> kids were everywhere, and people, so you had to really slow down, and I just turned and watched, and I saw women picking up their children in their cars, and these teenage kids coming in and running across the crosswalk in front of me, and then out of the blue, bam, this overwhelming spirit of love hit me. And I just started to weep and tears coming, and I couldn't quite see. So I slowly, slowly edged over and kind of parked to the side. There was a spot I could sign. And I just sat there and watched these children come and go of all shapes and sizes and colors and hairdos and plant clothing and then parents coming and going and I it was just this little barrage of God's children all around me and I just wept and I was trying to figure it out and then I realized the spirit told me this is the love God has what's your feeling for these people is that love you were praying for and it's my gift and I didn't understand that last comment it's my gift I knew the gift of love but why now? What's going on? Well, I went home. My wife was uh, doing her thing as a mom with the kids coming home from school and all that kind of thing. Anyhow, uh, the following Sunday, it was during the middle of the week, the following Sunday, we were sitting in church with my wife about five rows from the stand where the pulpit is and everybody's there. And all, you know, this was during, at the end of the sacrament meeting, it was a special meeting because there was a, a young man going on his mission and he was doing some thoughts on that. He was one of the speakers at the end. And so the state presidency member or two was there on, on the stand with the bishopric. And at the end of the meeting, uh, the state president up there uh, went like this. He goes, just like that. So I turned to look around who he was pointing that to. And I didn't see anybody acknowledging it. So I looked around again, looked there, and he goes, And I went like that. He, he goes, you, out. So he came out standing. My wife and I got up and we followed him into the hallway. 
And then he said, I, I, I want to have a chat with you on something. Can you come back to the office? So, And the state offices were in that hallway down the hall into an office. So my wife went in there and sat down, and that's when he issued a call to me to be on the high council with him. And the high council, for those you who don't know, is 12 brethren throughout nine or ten wards, whatever they, they, they're called, and there's a lot of responsibility. They do a variety of things that help run a stake that's usually around 4,000 people, nine, ten different wards, so 600 or so in every ward or more. And a high council helps that stake president do special setting aparts and callings and brings back information and handling welfare and handling church activities, handling the Relief Society, um, elders quorums and youth and all those kind of things. We have different assignments. And so he would call me that. But then one thing we also have the opportunity is to teach and share the gospel, be testimonies, do a 15, 20 minute talk or so every third Sunday. Um, so once a month, all 12 go around and it rotates, but we have a chance to get to know people throughout the entirety of the stake. And it's a very humbling thing. It's a very scary thing. But I just realized that since I was going to be, the Lord knew this, since I was going to be called to that position, and I had been seeking this feeling and this gift of love that he gave it to me so that I truly, when I came before any one of those words and stood and it time to give my talk, I could say that I love you. And often I would say, let me tell you why. That it's not just a personal individual. I've known you for 35 years and we broke bread together. We traveled, we swam, we boated, we've hunted, we've camped. I mean, that's uh, definitely you go to love people that way. But I'm talking about a love for God's children that um, I would probably normally not go and do activities with this person or that one because they live far away or further than I or not quite the same um, uh, interests or things like that or family. I'm a middle-aged situation with kids who are pretty grown as opposed to brand new couples with brand new little baby. I mean, there's things that we attract to different groups in our own, not cliques, but our, our uh, nature of circle of friends and circle of influence. Anyhow, I loved everybody. Those loved, those little ones loved their parents who just had their brand new little baby. I've been there. I had that eight times all the way up to the older, uh, more mature generation that have had such rich experience. I just had this love and it's never left me. It's never left me. And why do I bring that up? Because God has restored his church on kingdom on this earth. He's given all the gifts within it, the priesthood authority in it, but we're fallible, weak, um, not perfect individuals that he uses these little rusty old being bent up chip and ding, ding tools to help serve his people. But he gives us equipped with such things like this gift of love and all of a sudden a pouring of information, of truth, and you're going, where did that come from? To help know what to do when you give a blessing or you, you help go in and uh, counsel and all the things that go along with leadership that help to do the work in this little part of the vineyard or in this particular little flock of sheep uh, that you gather around like or ha like a hen gathers through chickens those experiences are christ's example that you try your best to follow and it would have been impossible for me to really express myself with authenticity and with the music behind my words if it was just supposed to say something like that whenever i gave a talk or whatever it wasn't a way i walked out of the people people i didn't even know and i just had this inward feeling of how much God loved them and how I need to love them. And I, I found myself sharing from that point of perspective. And it's just an incredible thing. And so I just had to make this comment about um, Dave Alexander's wonderful uh, work that he's sharing his testimony from an evangelical perspective. It's been very educational and very helpful. And to all those who are evangelicals out there or other Christians or even those that are not um, religious in nature that uh, really just have a love of people or want to just kind of go on their own course of life. I'll just simply say this. Listen, we're all in this together and we're all seeing what we have happening. We all have um, needs to protect ourselves, protect our spouses, if we're married, to protect our children, if we have children, or to hold on to our own relationships to keep them from imploding and all the things we do with life. And what we use to help us in that guidance, in that counsel, it's differing uh, for all of us, and that's fine. But 
I have no judgment of you if you don't ever check out the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'd be sad. I think you'll find it quite, quite interesting, very revealing, and very surprising of what we truly do believe in, and that you'll realize that it is not a cult. The spirit uh, behind that claim and that accusation, if you really stop to think about it, is because it's filled with disbelief. It's filled with a feeling of anger and hatred for what I believe is towards Satan, and they think it's Satan's behind it. So I can see that sense, but you don't. Um, you need to check out the people and talk with them and get a sense of them. I mean, there's even people who ask the question, some of the comments of... Uh, I don't know if I can let myself become a friend with the Latter-day Saint. I'm just going, wow. Where do you read in the scriptures that you can't be a friend to your neighbor? I, I thought Christ says you even have to love your neighbor. Love your enemy, he even said. Does that? Okay, don't love a good, righteous, kind, loving neighbor who happens to be Latter-day Saint. And yet Christ says, love your enemy. They don't quite come together, those two philosophies. Being contentious, being angry, being critical, like you see on some of the videos of, uh, on YouTube of the Latter-day Saint Conference Day and these preachers are outside or these individuals have flown in from New York uh, to hold their signs and scream and holler and argue and create contention and chaos and all that kind of yelling and screaming. Obviously, I can see Christ behind there doing the screaming and going, yeah, I can just, yeah, that's what Christ would do, right? No, I don't, it just, I just don't get it. I don't understand how they can be Bible-believing, have all those scriptures in there that talk about love your neighbor, to love one another, and that's how you know who his disciples are, because they love one another and keep his commandments, and think that that's what uh, he's how you manifest that understanding boy that uh, you know that doesn't quite fit what i think the interpretation i've received from the holy ghost of what scripture says and what the savior's own words in those verses are trying to teach his children his followers his disciples anyhow i'm rambling so i just wanted to share those things i want to mention though that it's not the attack of the swiffer passing out the, the Book of Mormon or inviting you to look into it. But that's what's happening. It's like a gigantic swiffer. And all hundreds of thousands of people are clinging to that Book of Mormon and coming in and going, wow, I'm past the fog. Here I am. Anyhow, I love you. I appreciate if any of you who did testimonies for uh, the channel that David Alexander put up and you've given it. I've looked at it. I want to thank you for that. If any of you see this a little bit, or just know I love you. I love the feelings I had as the Holy Ghost taught me things from the scriptures as you bore your testimony because you're all fulfilling what Christ's own word says will happen. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Love you. Thoughts, feelings, questions, love to hear. Until then, I wish you continued success. Goodbye.